All right, battlers, welcome back to a brand new Go Battle League video. I went 5 0 with Scizor, Polyrath, and Armored Mewtwo. Let's get into these fights. The Ultra League is drawing to a close. A Go Battle League will switch over to the Master League on, I believe, Friday of this week. So I'm trying to try out some spicier picks for you guys, give you a little bit more variety as you make maybe your final push into your next rank, or if you just want to close out Ultra League in a really good fashion. So here we go with Polyrath into Blastoise. For these sets, I did decide to lead Polyrath because I don't want Scizor in the lead. Uh, being a bug and, and steel type, it is both weak to fighting and fire. So so we are seeing a lot of Charizard leads these days and a lot of Polyrath leads, so I definitely did not want to lead it. I'm going to fire off my Ice Punch here, trying to bait this Blastoise into giving me the shield because I believe the second Dynamic Punch would just about KO. I don't think it would completely knock it out, but it would be very close. My opponent makes a switch here, beautifully timed. I'm actually going to fire off my Dynamic Punch, and I assume this is something that's going to resist it, and it absolutely is. Here comes Charizard. So I open up the switch tray, but I decide to stay in here with the Polyrath. I know that my opponent absolutely has to hit me with the blast burn otherwise they will not KO me in one strike so I'm definitely going to be able to get off a ice punch here Charizard is going to release charge energy on me here and this move will actually just be the dragon claw so not a huge deal I'm going to try to push for one more ice punch here even though those fire spins are resisted he's able to barely KO us there so I do decide to bring an armor Mewtwo here this Charizard does have a lot of energy, but I'm sure my opponent realizes these, these confusions are adding up. I'm expecting a Blast Burn, so I do decide to shield here, and it will be the Blast Burn. Confusion is a great move, but it does take four turns. So as you can see here, even after I threw my Confusion, this Charizard was still able to fire off a charge attack because the Confusion damage had not landed yet. It's a very, very slow move. Out comes this Blastoise again. And because Armored Mewtwo is my best defense against anything that Scizor cannot beat, I'm actually going to give it my final shield here. Firing off a few more Confusions, I do go for the Psy Strike, but again, Water Gun is a faster move than Confusion, so he's able to trigger his charge attack before mine. It does look like CMP, but because we were both in the middle of our fast move animations, it actually wasn't. It was actually just him tr uh, triggering his move first. And those kinds of details in the Go Battle League are the reason I'm running the moveset I am on Scizor. So, as we see here in the battle for the moment, I'm going to fire off the Psy Strike here against the Articuno. A Scizor does have access to two primary fast moves, one being Bullet Punch and the other one being Fury Cutter. So Bullet Punch is a steel type attack. As you can see here, we're actually able to get in one more Psy Strike, which is really nice. Those Ice Charges aren't doing much at all. And then Fury Cutter is a bug type move. The difference is that the Bullet Punch is going to take one turn, whereas Fury Cutter takes a half turn. It's a really, really fast attack, kind of like Dragon Breath, where you can just spam it really quickly. This Articuno is going to Icy Wind us, but I chose my Scizor's moveset particularly for matchups like this. This Articuno is an Ice type, so I did choose to run Iron Head, and then, I, and then my second move is Night Slash, which I kind of feel like is kind of non-negotiable with Scizor. It's a really great move. I do fire that off, and that is super effective. Even with the debuff, we bring it down, and then one more Fury Cutter will extinguish the Charizard. Going into the second match, Polyrath, Scizor, and Armor Mewtwo again. So in this lead situation, we do see Giratina. Now on my Polyrath, Core Breaker video, I did say that Polyrath can beat Giratina. That maybe was a little bit ambitious. It cannot beat Giratina in a flat matchup in most scenarios, but it can go blow for blow, especially with Dragon Claws versus Polyrath's Ice Punches. It can do really well. So I do bring in my Scizor here and I fire off the Night Slash against the Armor Mewtwo. Dark is a really nice typing because it's super effective against both Psychic and Ghost. So Scizor is able to kind of straddle the Armor Mewtwo and Giratina matchups here. I allow that Dynamic Punch through, just trying to see how much damage it did to Scizor, still testing things out. It does take a nice chunk, but I'm able to get to another Night Slash here. Night Slash will chunk down this Mewtwo, but it does get shielded. So I predict the next Night Slash will bring it down. Mewtwo is going to get to a charge move here, and I'm perfectly comfortable shielding Scizor because I believe I can outpace this Mewtwo to another attack. After it empties its energy with the Psy Strike, it needs at least three or four Confusions to get to another charge move. So I'm definitely able to get to a Night Slash here. This does take down the Mewtwo, which is great. Out comes my opponent's Giratina, and I am 
barely able to get to another Night Slash, but my opponent doing some really fancy switching here is going to decide to bring in their last Pokemon, which will be Venusaur. So Venusaur is a great Pokemon, Grass type. As you can tell, Fury Cutter is chipping away at it, and that Bug and Steel typing does help you to resist Fine Whips. However, because my Scizor is not carrying X Scissor, it's going to be not very effective against that Grass type Venusaur. I do bring in my Mewtwo here, which serves as my Grass coverage along with Polyrath's Ice Punches. These Confusions are going to chip down on Poison and Grass type Venusaur. He does hit us with that Frenzy Plant there because he did get a lot of energy from feigning my Scizor. I do fire off another Confusion there and actually decide to shield here. I believe I might be able to chip down this Venusaur. Another tricky thing about Mewtwo play is that when that confusion is thrown, you won't see the damage until after your opponent throws their charge attack if the, both of the movements are simultaneous. So I actually figured out here that I brought the wrong Mewtwo. This is a Rock Slide and Dynamic Punch Mewtwo, but we draw the shield all the same. I do bring in Polyrath here and fire off the Ice Punch. This match is actually extremely close. This is a really, really tricky match. Uh, bringing the wrong armor Mewtwo did not do me any favors. I'm trying to work up to another Ice Punch here, but Giratina is going to outpace me. So again, uh, another set of bad news for us, but I believe I can get to one more Ice Punch here after I fire off this one. Again, Polyrath's Ice Punch is taking nice little chunks out of Giratina and he gets to them so quickly. I should get to another Ice Punch, which is really, really great. Will it be enough to KO though? It is not. Giratina is going to continue to farm up Polyrath, so it's got a charge move loaded and ready to go. Shadow Sneak is going to hurt really bad, but as you saw there, I was tapping the screen really quickly and I was able to fire off the confusion. That means that the damage will land right now and I won't have to get another fast move in. Going into set three, gonna showcase more Scizor going forward. Here we go with Polyrath into Empoleon. So Empoleon is a great counter for Registeel. It also does pretty well against a lot of the meta. It does have access to Hydro Cannon and Flash Cannon, which can really ding those fairies. Uh, particularly because Empoleon is a steel type, so it does get stab on that attack. I do go straight for a dynamic punch, trying to force that shield, and that's exactly what we get. Not too worried about charge moves here, but anticipating the swap, I do mash that ice punch there at the last second. So I'm going to fire this off against the Giratina, and because my opponent is switch locked, it is now safe for me to bring in my Scizor. So Scizor is going to do really well here. Again, I really enjoy Fury Cutter in Go Battle League because of the Go Battle lag that we encounter. You can never really be sure when your charge moves are going to register. So a move like Fury Cutter is going to allow me to kind of trigger my charge moves whenever I want to. It's I don't want to say it's like an easy mode for a fast type attack on a Pokemon, but it is really, really straightforward. Uh, you can, you don't have to really worry about over tapping on the screen and then trying to be really careful with your charge attacks. Kind of like with a confusion user or a charmer, if you tap the screen too heavily, you might miss your charge attack. That doesn't really happen with Scizor. So I actually go for the Iron Head here. This was the wrong move. Uh, water does resist steel, so this was uh, not smart by me. Empoleon takes that like a champ, but I am up two shields. Now, I am going to decide to come back in here with Polyrath and shield up whatever attack Empoleon throws. Uh, in the Ultra League, you have to be very wary of Charmers lurking in the back of people's teams. If my Polyrath were a, at a very low health and a Charmer suddenly came out, I'd be in really big trouble. So there we are able to preserve Polyrath. Out comes Snorlax. Snorlax makes for a decent Armor Mewtwo counter, but again, very, very prickly coverage with the Armor Mewtwo because I do have that Dynamic Punch to kind of serve as a super effective uh, counter to this normal type Snorlax. I'm going to go straight for Dynamic Punch here. My opponent did miss an opportunity there as well, I feel. Uh, with Snorlax, if you work up to a bigger charge attack before throwing the Body Slam, it does put a little more shield pressure on your opponent. As you can tell there, the Body Slam really doesn't do much to Mewtwo at all, so I'm not very concerned about it. I'm actually able to get to another uh, charge attack here, this time being Psy Strike. So I got really lucky here, able to take down the Snorlax. My opponent's Empoleon comes out and it will farm up one more waterfall worth of energy. Now at this point, I am going to bait with Ice Punch. Punch. My opponent is going to go ahead and fire off their first charge move, though. I, that might have been a uh, CMP tie. Gonna shield that up, bait with the Ice Punch here, and this match is pretty much in the bag. My opponent absolutely has to shield just in case this is Dynamic Punch, so they can't really afford to try to call my bait there. My opponent is going to get off one more charge attack here, but Polyrath, being such a sturdy water type, is going to take it no problem. Here comes Dynamic Punch, and that is GG's.
Going to the fourth game here, Polyrath again in the lead. Polyrath will encounter my opponent's Charizard. So this is a purified Charizard, very interesting move there. This Charizard is probably packing overheat. However, if my opponent evolved this during community weekend in December of last year, they definitely could have access to Blast Burn. So this Charizard is going to have to learn a Blast Burn to really do anything to Polyrath. And due to its flying typing, is going to take good chip damage from these Ice Punches. So Charizard is going to fire off the Dragon Claw there. A little bit of chip damage to Polyrath, but Polyrath can tank anything that's not a big heavy hitting attack from a fire type. It just has too much resistance too much bulk in the Ultra League. It is really, really great. My opponent is going to get to another charge move here, and this time it will be another Dragon Claw. So they're really trying to bait my shields out, but I am definitely not going to give them to them. I'm going to go here for another Ice Punch. Again, with turn speed, it's really important to kind of know your pacing. I know that Polyrath can outpace a lot of Pokemon to their charge move, so I'm very comfortable using it in the lead. Again, my opponent is deciding to, deciding to stay in, so I am going to fire off another Ice Punch. This time I will give this shield, just because I know I can draw a shield on my opponent's end. They go straight for the Blast Burn, which I think was a little bit overkill. I think in that health range, Dragon Claw would have been enough. But either way, that is good for us. Ice Punch is going to bring down the Charizard. We are one shield each. Out comes Sceptile. So Sceptile did get a very interesting buff with Bullet Seed. It was already really good with Fury Cutter, but Bullet Seed only taking three attacks to get to the Leaf Blade. So it's a very, very spamming grass type that I'm definitely seeing more of in the Go Battle League. At this point, I do decide to bring in Scizor because it's going to resist a lot of things that, that this Sceptile can throw. I know that this Sceptile does have access to Area Lace, Leaf Blade, and Earthquake though, so definitely need to be very careful. I am going to call my opponent here. I think they're going up for the Earthquake, and they think that I don't know that they have it. Otherwise, why would I bring in a Steel type? <laughs> but I'm going to shield up that Earthquake and then get to another Night Slash here. If this goes unshielded, this will definitely KO that Sceptile. Sceptile goes down, my opponent's last Pokemon is Snorlax. So not a great situation here. I'm gonna go for the Night Slashes, just trying to do as much damage as possible to Snorlax so that when my Armor Mewtwo comes out, I can just kind of pound it with a uh, Dynamic Punch and then be done. Scizor does get the boost there, which is pretty cool. As you can tell, Fury Cutter does not do a whole lot of damage. So it might be a little more beneficial, especially if you're seeing more fairies in the uh, Ultra League to run Bullet Punch because the boosted Bullet Punch is probably gonna do a lot more to things like Togekiss. As you can tell there, he did use Outrage. Steel is not going to take much damage from a Dragon type attack. So Scizor definitely standing strong here. I'm gonna fire off the Iron Head, probably an opportunity to go for the Night Slash there. Let's see how much a boosted Night Slash does to this Snorlax definite increase in damage that was really really devastating. Snorlax is going to finally put our Scizor out of commission but we have a healthy Armor Mewtwo in the back. Armor Mewtwo again tapping really fast, one confusion goes out and that is GG's. Going into the final battle of the video trainers, I looked this battler up because I recognized their name. This is a ace trainer out of Argentina, so this is a really, really good fight. He does lead that Mewtwo and he does win the lead, so I have to swap into my own Mewtwo. You definitely don't want to swap into your hard counter because then your hard counter is exposed. So I do swap into Mewtwo there and out comes his Registeel. At this point, Armor Mewtwo is going to put a lot of pressure on Registeel here with the dynamic punches. I like this matchup as well because this Registeel has to land three flash cannons to put this armor Mewtwo out of commission. Uh, there's the first one, but as you can tell, in between these charge moves, these lock-ons are barely doing anything to something so bulky like armor Mewtwo. I'm going to fire off another dyna dynamic punch here, just trying to pressure my opponent and get their shields. He does not shield that time, so uh, Registeel is standing strong, and as you can tell, it does have a Best Buddy ribbon on it, so this is a, a Best Buddy boosted Registeel. There was the second Flash Cannon, but again, this Registeel needs a lot of lock-ons to bring down Armor Mewtwo. I'm actually going to work up here enough energy for the Psy Strike. My opponent does swap out, so maybe an opportunity to go for a Dynamic Punch, but either way, it's going to work out because in comes the Armor Mewtwo. So my opponent did switch lock themselves, which is really great news for me because this means I can bring out my anti-psychic Pokemon, Scizor. Scizor is going to do really well here, those Fury Cutters being super effective to psychic type Mewtwo. He's going to fire off a charge move here, which will, I'm sure, be Dynamic Punch, and it is. I'm going to shield that up and then go here for Night Slash. Always praying for the boost with the Night Slash, uh, trying to get it. I do not get it that time, but he allows it through. Going to go for a second Night Slash here just to deny this Armor Mewtwo any more charge attacks. 
and we do bring down the armor Mewtwo. So my opponent's got two Pokemon left. He does have a very weak one that we have already seen. Out comes Registeel. At this point, trainers, he brings out the Regi Steel, and I'm pretty confident he has something in the back that is going to be weak to my Scizor. Out comes my Polyrath, and here comes his Swampert. So not a good situation for us at all. I'm going to go straight for my Dynamic Punch here. This is actually a really, really close game. A lot of fun. A uh, shout out to Chroma. I was unable to find you on Twitter, but if you were watching this, GG's, my friend. This is a really good game. So Polyrath is going to have to take this charge move here. Shields are down. Earthquake takes a huge chunk, putting me way deep into the yellow. And at this point, battlers, I really enjoy going for double ice punches. There's just not a whole lot of time when you're going up against another Mudshot user like Swampert. Luckily, we're able to get to the second one right there at the very end. This game does come down to the wire. Swampert actually is going to freeze up there for a second and I feel really bad. I feel like my opponent encountered some lag, so I actually hold off on charging my Ice Punch. I just felt like it was really unfair to do that to my opponent in such a great battle. So they do get their charge move off just like they would have otherwise, but they probably survived with less health than they would have because of the Ice Punch. Either way, I try to level it out. I mean, I hate that we have to make Go Battle League fair for our opponents, but we do our best, right? So out comes the Ridgy Steel, and I know the Focus Blast is coming. The question is, will Night Slash be enough? And it is not. Reggie Steel is going to stand there and take it. Out comes a Focus Blast. Is Scizor going to survive this, battlers? What do you think? Scizor barely hangs on, the lock-ons are not enough, and we get to the Night Slash. This will be enough. Very GG's. Battlers, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like, comment down below, and then subscribe to see more.